Listen, this started out as a top 10 list, but my previous project files succumbed to some kind of corruption gremlin. This turned out to be a good thing, though, because I was able to, you know, take my time and make this video bomb as hell. I did my best to avoid major spoilers, but you should still proceed with caution, just in case. Also, none of these games were released in 2018, but I'm sure you will survive bravely. And here we go. I think I was maybe 10 or 11 when I saw the first Alien movie. At the time, it felt like it was a huge mistake because the Xenomorph ended up haunting my dreams frequently through childhood. As a 33-year-old woman, it still features prominently in some of my nightmares to this day. And even though my first few watches of Alien were through my fingers, I still sort of fell in love with the soft, warm glow of the living quarters on the Nostromo. I discovered the art of H.R. Giger and developed a taste for the macabre because of that. Ellen Ripley was probably one of my first crushes, and I currently have an orange cat named Jonesy. I think it's probably safe to say that Ridley Scott's vision of the future really stuck with me. So when it was announced that Alien Isolation was being released, I was equal parts excited and terrified because this game looked like it was my nightmares come to life. And boy oh boy, it was exactly that. Everything about Alien Isolation is designed to make you anxious, and it pokes at your fight-or-flight responses with a malicious glee. Opening doors and saving your game is this tactile experience and takes precious seconds to complete. While you're waiting for your game to save or trying to hurriedly cut open that panel with a plasma torch, you're nervously looking around and hoping that you don't hear that horrible sound. That telltale screech that means a xenomorph is coming for that ass. More than that, though, Alien Isolation is essentially walking through an alien movie. The dev team did such a wonderful job at creating a beautifully cinematic environment, and they understood that careful attention to detail was going to make or break this game. Look at these fucking cassette tapes in this cardboard box aboard this spaceship. <laughs> it's so good. Even without the context of fandom, these are excellently crafted environments with a high potential to suck you in at the most inopportune moments. At least for me. I can't be the only person that this has happened to. Just want y'all to know that. Womp womp. I'm gonna go ahead and fangirl a little bit here. Y'all, they let you explore the alien derelict from the first movie. It's so good! The interactivity of the game really drives home the fact that you're playing a competent and experienced engineer, and I was really happy that they filled in the story gap between the first two movies with a narrative about Ripley's daughter. All in all, the cinematic combination of action and gameplay makes Alien Isolation an incredible horror game that is both very stressful and a lot of fun. I'm going to be real candid with y'all for a minute. 2018 was probably the worst year of my life. A lot of weird, scary, life-changing things happened to me and my family. I lost things and people and support groups that were really precious to me, and as a result I became really isolated and lonely. I was in an incredible amount of pain, both physically and emotionally, and there were some days when just existing was painful and hard. During this time, I used gaming as a coping mechanism so I could have agency over something during a time when everything was careening out of my control. When you play games, you can actually solve the problems you're presented with, and you can actively surmount the obstacles in front of you with the satisfying immediacy that real life was unable to afford me last year. Senua's sacrifice hit me on a very deep, very personal level. Watching Senua struggle and fight and fail and triumph, it felt like we were parallel to one another at times, that we were fighting the same fight. It was like she was showing me that no matter how hard things got, no matter how much 
it hurt. I could still push myself to go forward and survive and live. The developers told a story that was able to coax these raw, visceral emotions out of me, and that is an incredible feat for any storyteller to accomplish. It might not be fair to judge a game based on that criteria, but Hellblade happened to me at a time when I needed it the most, and quite frankly, I would have loved the game even if I didn't develop a personal connection with it. It's a very somber experience, and Ninja Theory went to great lengths to depict psychosis accurately and with the advisement of people who actually experience psychosis. A common trope, especially in video games, is that mental illness is associated with violence or evil. Senua's Sacrifice challenges that trope by putting us inside the head of a woman who's struggling to accept herself. I need this sword. It's important. Can you help me? You get to help Senua on her quest for closure, and her journey leads you through terrifying places. You can never be quite sure if what she's seeing is real, whether she's fighting flesh and blood or her own personal darkness. And you learn, as you make your way through the story, that it ultimately doesn't matter. Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice, is a beautiful and brutal journey, and it showed me that fear and courage can, and often do, go hand in hand. All you needed was a little help. A little hope. So, you've probably ascertained by now that I really appreciate good visual design in games. Visual design is my favorite. Visual design is so much my favorite that it's kind of a problem sometimes. Sometimes I like to gamble and purchase games based solely on their cover art. Listen, I already know how foolish this is, you don't have to tell me. In my defense, when it works out, it really fucking works out. Echo turned out to be a jackpot for me. We're not going to talk about what happens when I lose, though, not right now. Before I continue, I recommend going into this game as blind as possible. I made a deliberate effort not to include spoilers, so if you like what you see here, you should absolutely check it out. Echo is kind of a slow burner. It's gradual, and it unfolds itself with this careful kind of subtlety. So if you're looking for something that goes a mile a minute, this ain't the one. So much about this game is diametrically opposed. It's light, and it's dark, it's organic, it's geometric, it's calming and it's anxiety-inducing, but it all works together so harmoniously because everything seems to be designed with a purpose. The massive environments make you feel so small and alone. Whether you're on a spaceship, or the surface of a planet, or inside a sprawling palace, it's as though you've been abandoned or arrived too late to something important. And it's not just being alone that makes you feel lonely. There's equipment and table settings and food that were all clearly meant to be used, but remain perfectly untouched and will probably stay that way. The pacing of the narrative reveals tidbits of information, but it doesn't give you every detail about how you got to where you are. Each break in action is well-timed to let you breathe and to process the bits of story that are revealed to you during these peaceful interludes. Every single aspect of the environments adds to the story in a wordless way, but ultimately you're never really given the full story. The game trusts you to put the pieces together for yourself and interpret them as you will with the information that you have. Nearly all of the objects I saw would make me ask, what is this for? Why is this here? I wanted to know the purpose of everything around me because it's all just so deliberately placed. The number of chairs in this game really stuck out to me, for example. Who needs this many chairs? Who was going to sit in these chairs? Maybe the number of chairs someone owned was a symbol for wealth and decadence, I don't fucking know. The sound and music was likewise carefully designed, and it's a vital element to creating both anxiety and relief as you traverse these beautiful and dangerous halls. 
In fact, my only complaint about this game is that it's inaccessible to the deaf and hard of hearing because of how vital sound is in this game. I think it would be really neat to play with controller vibrations to correspond with the blackout cycles, for example. As far as gameplay goes, Echo offers complex and challenging stealth puzzles that can really get your adrenaline pumping, and it encourages you to take risks. Taking risks actually seems to be part of the gameplay, at least if you're as clumsy as I am. I know y'all can see me. I know you can. Shit. I had to pull so many inelegant Hail Marys throughout my playthrough, but oh, when they worked out, it was tremendously be. satisfying. Echo made me feel a sense of wonderment and curiosity while I was playing it, and it's been a long time since a game has made me feel that way. I was so excited about everything this game had to offer from start to finish. It gives me warm, fuzzy feelings to see indie developers create beautiful games that showcase an earnest creativity and love for designing new worlds for people to explore. Echo was my favorite game of 2018 because it opened up my imagination and reaffirmed my love and devotion to indie games and the studios that make them. And this is all from a game that I picked just because I liked the banner that I saw on its Steam page. Y'all, if that's not lucky, I don't know what is. See? I told y'all this video was gonna be bomb as hell, didn't I? I keep my promises. Thank you for watching, share it if you like it, and come hang out with me on Twitch sometime. I'd love to meet you. Bye!